Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will cover the design procedure of a steel column for compression that involves a trial and error approach. To do that, we need to understand the following steps. First, we estimate the compressive stress in the column, let's say 100 newton per millimeter squared, and evaluate the approximate area required which equals design load divided by the estimated stress. Then, we need to select a suitable universal column section size from the table, and evaluate the non-dimensional slenderness using these equations. L is the effective length, and I is the radius of gyration. After that we evaluate the buckling reduction factor, x, from the design curve, and determine the buckling stress, which equals, buckling reduction factor, x times yield strength. Finally, we compare the buckling stress with the actual stress on the column. So, actual stress equals design load divided by actual area. The actual stress should be less than or equal to the buckling stress obtained from the design curve. If it is higher, then the column will buckle, therefore, we should select a bigger section. If it is substantially lower, then we should select a smaller section, in order to improve economy. Let's start with the following application example. A pin-ended column with a yield strength of 275 newton per millimeter squared, 4 meter long is subjected to axial permanent load of 350 kilonewtons, and variable load of 300 kilonewtons. So, the design load equals 1.35 times 350, plus, 1.5 times 300, which equals 922.5 kilonewtons. As we mentioned earlier, the first thing we need to do is estimate the compressive stress in the column. Let's say 100 newton per millimeter squared, and evaluate the approximate area required. Hence, approximate area equals design load divided by estimated stress, which is 922.5 times 10 to 3 to convert to newton, divided by 100 newton per millimeter squared, and that gives us 9200 millimeters squared. We need to convert this to centimeter squared. To do this, we divide 9200 by 100, and this gives us 92 centimeters squared. Then, we need to select a suitable column section size from the table, and evaluate the non-dimensional slenderness. Let's try 254 by 254, 89 kilogram per meter universal column which has the following properties. To evaluate the non-dimensional slenderness, we need to use the following equation. Therefore, slenderness ratio equals 4000 mm divided by open bracket 86 times 6.52 cm close bracket. Let's convert 6.52 cm to millimeter. So, it would be 86 times 65.2. Our result is 0.713. From the design curve we should be able to obtain the reduction factor as we get a non-dimensional slenderness of 0.713. If we extend the line to meet at this point with the curve, this gives us approximate figure of reduction factor x which equals 0.7. As a result, buckling stress equals 0.7 times steel strength 275 newton per millimeter squared. This gives us 192 newton per millimeter squared. Finally, we need to work out the actual stress which equals design load 922.5 times 10 to 3, divided by area section 114 centimeters squared, divided by 100 to convert it to millimeter. This gives us 81 newton per millimeter squared. The above column would be safe, but not very economic as the loads produce a stress, which is less than half the compressive strength of the column. It is worth trying a smaller section in this case. You should try 203 by 203, 46 kg per meter universal column and comment below with your findings. Thanks for watching. We hope you found some useful tips. Check out our website at structuralengineercalcs.com. Please like and subscribe, and let us know what would you like to see next. The human footprint is a masterpiece of engineering and a work of art. Stay safe. Goodbye, and see you soon.